Now, we are going to go ahead and kick right into it. We're going to keep this to like 30 to 45 minutes, which means I'm going to fast track. We'll see how that works for us. You know, me, it's hard to be on a fast track and still hit all the spots you want to hit. So today we are actually talking about two products that we have out there. We have what we call the journal, the Encourage what we call the encouragement journal, which is um, a spiral bound. It has blank, well, there are not actually blank pages. They are pages that have lines on them. And then they have messages at the top of each particular page. So there are lots of pages and there are lots of potential messages. And then the other product that we have involved here are the in the moment support cards. And so they come in a little holder and there are tabs, a blue tab, a green tab, and then a yellow tab. And each of the tab represent a different um, kind of message in the moment. One of them is uh, the blue tend to be acknowledgement messages, just acknowledging something, becoming aware of something. And then come encouragement messages. They're the green ones. And those are messages that um, have an element of let's figure out how to make this something that could make a difference for you. You know, this is something that support. This is support. And then the third one is when you're ready to like, I'm feeling I'm feeling I have some strength. So I would like a growth message, a message of growth or change. And so those are the cards and that's the journal. So what I'm going to be doing during this session is taking on some of the separate roles that people might have in positive approach to care, different ways you could use it. So I'm going to start off with the journal and I'm going to go through the possible uses of the journal and its content. And my colleagues here, they also have these products available. And so they may have some different thoughts or they may react and respond to some of my thoughts. So we have some folks on here. We have Beth, we have Christine, we have Rachel. Emilio, he's here. Mostly he's here to run the webinar and to keep, make sure that we got a good recording and all that good stuff. But, you know, he's around. So what we're going to do is I'm actually going to go through my content, and then I'm going to pause at the end of each slide and see if my colleagues here have anything to add, change, delete. Or I may say at the very beginning, you know what, I want you to be this group of people. So I'm going to be this person, you're going to be the group of people or the individual that I'm working with, just to see how that plays out. Okay. So the uses of the journal and its content, number one, it could be personal. I mean, you can use it just for yourself. The second could be if you're a leader of a group of some sort. So you're leading a group. A third could be if you're a group member, you're a member of a group and you have a stake in the group and you really want the group to have an opportunity to do something. Um, and you learn something and you want to share. Another one is if you're a trainer or an educator and your goal is to put out awareness and knowledge. Your, your, your mission in your role is to give people an opportunity to become aware and uh, possibly gain some knowledge. And then we're looking at whether or not you might be a coach, somebody who's supporting your care, supporting somebody else. And so your mission there is to help them build some skill, turn it from knowledge to skill. Or could you be a counselor, a consultant, and you're working with somebody and you're trying to support them in the work that they're doing and problem solving and thinking things through and figuring out how to put something. And maybe you're a care plan coordinator. Like your job is to actually coordinate a care plan for somebody. So you're care managing, case managing, something more along that line. So given your role, there might be opportunities that you could use these things. So we're talking about the journal. And so now the first one we're going to do is personal use options. So how could you use it just for yourself? Not for anybody else, just for yourself. And I think about it in terms of preparation, reflection, and plan development. So preparation time is before I'm going to do something. I give myself a little prep time and I go into uh, my life, my day, my night, whichever time I do it, I, I prepare. It's a quiet time when I pull one 
of these. I could just flip to a page or I could go through sequentially, but I turn to a page and I look at the quote at the top and it says, it's not about the family you had, but about the family you make. And I'm thinking about what's ahead of me and how I might consider that concept in the work that I'm going to be doing. And I can either jot something down or I could just use it as a, a simple think thing or I could actually self-talk about it. Yeah, it's not about the family you had, but it is about the family you make. Now, who's in my new family? So I can prepare myself for what I'm going to be. What's the, what, about, what about this family I'm going to be working with today? What about, you know, the family that I'm involved with? Or I could have time after an interaction. Wow, that was a lot. So rather than immediately try to do something in that moment, to take this time to do some reflection. And so I pop it open. And this time I look at it and it's not about the family you had, but the family you make. So what do I make of the family I, I'm, I'm, I was just with? What can I make of that? Um, cause they, you know, let's say they aren't the family they used to be, or there are elements of the family they used to be. And I think they're trying to hang together, but I'm wondering if it's working for them. What did I notice? Is there a way, you know, are they making a new family, you know, using the family they had or is some? I mean, or it could be about my life. I mean, it can be about yourself, somebody else, but it's a reflection time. And then instead there's the, okay, it's not either of those. I'm actually getting ready to come up with a game plan. I actually have a plan of action that I'm going to be doing and I need a plan. And so I'm going to pull a quote and I'm going to look at it and see how it might fit into this. I'm actually developing something, a plan of action. And I want to know, you know, what about this family thing? And there are, I don't know, Christine, you put this thing together about how many quotes do you think there are in here that you could pull up at any moment, in, you know, at any day? What do you got? There's about 120. Okay. Well, mm -hmm. I mean, there's a variation. And so you can get yourself to work with the one that you saw, or you can say, I don't, that's not the one for me today. Well, okay, we'll go find another one. So you can do it sequentially, find one that seems to match. But it also could be a quick reference or a, a go to when you notice something different about yourself or somebody else and you need a pause. <laughs> so you go, you know what? I'm going to pause this here for a second because I'm feeling the need for a little encouragement because this was a rough spot we hit. And okay, so I'm just going to turn it and see what it pops up. You know, sometimes you find something when you're looking for it. So, you know, here's what I found when I did that. Um, if it is what it is, then the real question is, what are you going to do with it or about it? You know, and boy, is that the right thing to pick when we've hit a rough spot. So do we believe it is what it is? I mean, it is what it is. Yeah. So what is it you're, we're going to do with it or what are we going to do about it? Because, I mean, we both acknowledge it is what it is. So, and it gives us uh, something to look at, think about, but it gave the pause. I needed a pause and I needed encouragement because I was sort of in a rough, try to figure this out spot. And I needed something beside what I had in the relationship right that moment. Now, I might also use it to better appreciate your own brain and how it's working or glitching. So I get stuck on something and it's like, Ay, ay, ay. I need something because I'm just going, I keep circling around. I, I'm an emerald. I, I, keep re, I'm, I keep going through the same thing and it's like I end up in the same place. It's like this is not working. So um, we can choose to commit ourselves to learning how to let go of what is fading, but celebrating and using what remains at any point in time. Okay, let me think about that. How does that relate to what it is? I'm struggling with right now. And my own brain is saying, I just keep repeating. I, I'm not transitioning. I'm just repeating the same episodes. I'm having a really hard time finding some new. Okay. What does it say? How can we choose to commit ourselves? Okay. And this may be that point where I say, you know what? I think I need somebody else's brain, or I think I need to write some stuff down, or I need a friend. I need, yeah. 
You know, it, I think it brings so much to mind, Tipa, the times when, you know, my husband with his family was so involved in so much the primary or the secondary care partner that I was tertiary. And so I had perspective. And yet I'm not sure that my perspective was necessarily all that helpful at all at all times. And I wanted to be helpful and having yet another voice. Like I could have seen us using these quotes as he and I would connect over, you know, building a fire outside and just sitting there and being present and being with the fire. And there was quiet times where the darkness helped this extrovert get out of his face. And we have our best talks when it's dark because I married a strong introvert. And I could almost imagine it's not me helping him see that, you know, hey, um, it is what it is right now. Yes, they've made this yet another crazy fiscal decision, but we're right here right now. What are we going to do about it? And let's go forward from there. And me saying that is such a different impact from, you know, I read something. I'm just wondering, like, as a personal use option, how much this may have facilitated me saying, you know, Tim, and how that comes off so differently, especially as the wife versus, you know, Tim, I read something. And it just seems to change the focus from me on him to take a look at this. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So, yeah, Beth sort of hit it why I put that in as one of the personal use options, because we can use it as a resource, a tool, but somehow it's our own brain, you know, really, really look at our own brain and how it's getting in the way or how it's working well. And then to consider it's used to better understand interactions and what might be happening in relationships, even when there is no dementia present. And Beth actually also hit on that. But each person must make the choice for themselves. You cannot make it for them. And so picture best scene and the phrase used that time is is different. And it's like, yeah, yeah, but that's hard because I want them to make a certain choice. It's like, yeah, but it is, you know, but I can't do that. So what do we, what can we make choices about? You know, that's the hard part is I can't want it more than you do kind of thing. So what do y'all think about the personal use options? What do y'all, you know, did I cover a variety? You certainly did. Um, and I have to admit, confess, whatever you want to call it. Um, I, I've had this, I've had this notebook for a while now. Um, it sits on my desk and, uh, I have two little toddlers who come and like to touch and feel and, and pick up and mess with, if you want to say, you know, a variety of things. So one day I was, I was a little frustrated at the situation. Um, and I truly, just what you did, I, I randomly picked up this book because I had to do some, I was on my way to do something else. Um, and the mess, <laughs> what popped up for me that day was it's all in your approach. <laughs> Positive approach to dementia, to people, to care, to stressors into changing your own abilities and perspectives. In that moment, it was, um, it was like a, um, a slap in the face for me, a healthy one, <laughs> a needed one and an important one because um, it did remind me to consider how am I approaching the people in my life right now? And the people in my life right now are short. <laughs> yeah. And young. Yeah. But it yeah. matters. And it mattered in that moment. Yeah. How was I perceiving my what was stressing me? And then how was I relating that to them? So reacting or responding. Yeah. Cool. Reacting or responding. Yeah. Yeah. Good. All right. Well, so you know, I didn't stop at personal use. I went to group lead options. So I'm gonna cruise through these pretty quickly because this could be support group. They could be a, a faith-based group. They could be just a family group. Um, everyone read the same line and jot down something from their th reactions or thoughts or experience that relates to the phrase. So um, here's one I pulled, which is, if you don't like what happened today, how can you use what you did, did to build new possibilities for tomorrow? So everybody in the group, 
thinks about it, and then jot something down. Or pair people up in the group and have them think for one minute about the phrase and then share with one another for a minute each, and then have the pairs offer the meaning of what their partner said for 30 seconds in the group. So it's an exercise where you think and then you come up with something, then you share with each other, and then your job is to share what that other person said to the larger group. So you're becoming their partner, and you had to listen well enough and, and, and really pay attention well enough so you could get their message, not yours. And so the phrase that threw itself at me was, um, no one ever calmed down by being told to calm down. Okay, that's the one that came when I flipped pages. That's just, I, every time I would turn it and flip to a page, and that was what it was when I did these. Now, the third option is ask group members to think back over their week or their day, and then share two things that went well and one they want to focus on for change after they think about this phrase. Take time right now to simplify. So thinking back, Two things that went well in regard to something like about related to this. Take time right now to simplify. And one that you're thinking, I want to focus on for change, given what's happened. Okay, and then that's it for the group. So thoughts there, real quick, because we got to keep moving. We got lots of other options here. I'm just cruising through things pretty quick here. There's lots of ways to use this stuff, I guess, is the bottom line. You also made me wonder about a team building exercise for um, like a, a group of folks who work together. Maybe. Cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So a team. Nice. Excellent. Good. That's another kind of group I hadn't even thought of. Thanks, Christine. All right. Well, then we have trainer and educator options. So select a phrase, set an objective for the session and provide AELCs. So this is a total different thing here. So when we say ELC, we basically have people share an experience, we share about the experience, we talk about the why of the experience, and then we go back to the phrase and how we use what we did in the session and what we know about dimension brain change to figure out how it fits together. And then what's something that we might wanna change, try to see differently, try out. So here it is, this is a phrase that popped up again, to change your brain, drill for the skill. That's the phrase. And the objective I'm going to set for my session is use the visual verbal touch sequence for guidance to sit down in a chair. That's what I want people to do. Use visual verbal touch in that order to get somebody to sit down in a chair. And the phrase is to change your brain, drill for the skill. Now, I can imagine that my trainers are going, ooh, okay, so what's the experience we want to have people have? Okay, and then we could do, okay, so what are people going to share out then? How did it feel? So we could do two different experiences. One where you're using visual, verbal, and touch cues, and one where you just try to use touch cues with the person's eyes closed. Or they're only allowed to do what you say. Only allowed to do what you say or the one where you use it all. So anyway, that was sort of one way. A second one, ask a question and ask learners and have learners use a phrase to consider how that phrase relates to an agenda they might have with someone there when they're trying to help. Okay, so here's the phrase, how we start dictates where we end. That's the phrase from the journal. Okay, so the objective I'm gonna give you on this is you need to find a blue pen to write a note. Now, here's, here's what I'm gonna give you as your first experience. You have monocular vision and only gross grasp in one hand. So I want you to have monocular vision and gross grasp in one hand only, and I want you to go ahead and get the pen. How many of you are going, I can't find a blue pen? <laughs> and when you pick it up, if all you have is gross graph, how many are you picking up the pen like this? 
okay? All right, now instead you have normal vision and you can use both hands effectively. Now, go ahead and get the pen. Okay. Okay, now here's your third assignment. You have normal abilities. You're the care partner of a person with monocular vision and only gross grasp in one hand. He's looking for a pen. Now remember, how we start dictates where we end. That's your phrase. Go ahead. Okay, so what do y'all think? You know, I, I think as a trainer, how many times, it, I feel like sometimes for me, I know this is very abstract, but it feels like mojo. It feels like my trainings and my speaking events go well. When I'm passionate and I can see little bits, I get reinforcers too. So sometimes if stuff is really boring and I've done it a thousand times, if I can't infuse any sort of feelings into it, it just, it lands flat on my audience. And I wonder how many of our trainers out there with A, B, and C have done it a thousand ways. I just can't be creative anymore. I could really use this flipping it open and going suddenly I've got a new objective or a new way of looking at one of the objectives I've got to cover anyways. I love that. Cool. Yeah. That's where I thought, well, maybe we could just do something a little different here. Yeah. All right. So coach. Interesting. Apparently I have an animation feature that I didn't realize I had on my slide. Um, okay, so first, we're going to read a phrase to develop your own awareness, knowledge, and practice a skill before you start a coaching session. So, okay, I'm going to pull one. Let's see here. What have I got? Simplify. Try using fewer words. Sequencing tasks rather than multitasking. Keep it under five things to get it done right now. To get it done right now. Okay. Simplify. Stand up. Turn. Point. Nice. See, you guys got it. I only use four words, by the way. I only got it. So, we don't know what I'm about to do, but what I can tell you is... All of a sudden, I simplified everything. I broke it down into single steps. It was a sequence, and I kept it under five right now. So that took a little work on my part. And we don't know where I'm going next, but that's okay because all of you are with me. <laughs> or use a phrase as a resource to offer learners when you want to practice a skill. So our goal today is to help somebody live fully in the moment. And the moment we're in is helping people get to the dining room for lunch. Okay, that's, that's where we're headed. But the moment is they're in chairs in the living area. That's the moment. So help somebody live fully in the moment. So it's not about getting to the dining room. It's about how you get connected in the living room. Because once you're connected, then you have a better chance for the next moment. Now, use a phrase to role play a skill and then ask people to notice the person or the people they're trying to support. It's okay to pause, take a deep breath in and slowly let it out. Okay, pause. Ooh, Beth. Yeah, What'd you notice? Hmm. How much I changed my focus on multitasking back to you. Hmm. Okay, so you were more paying attention to me by the end of the breathe out. Yeah. Oh, cool. Good. Okay, then there's use a phrase to consider in the huddle for the day. So we're doing a little huddle. Okay, so we're going to start the huddle with greet before you treat. It's one of our famous phrases, greet before you treat. Shoot. 
I started the session and I forgot to do it. I need to make sure, even in the huddle, that I greeted you before I started treating you. And I skipped a step. So I'm going to stir over and let's see how that goes. Because when we get into what we're doing, sometimes it's easy to skip a step, miss a beat. And that's fine when I'm with you, sort of, except I dragged you along. Um, just saying. So those are coaching opportunities with these same phrases. Then we have consulting. Read a phrase and develop your own awareness and knowledge. You know, before you start doing cycles, before you enter a consulting session, use it as a resource or a go-to option when you're asked why something is happening or why the person is doing something or not doing something or after your initial reflection. So, wow, it sounds like that's really hard as a way to pause and slow both of you down. So, for instance, wow, that's a really great question. Why is that happening? I'm going to pause this for a minute and take a look at a phrase Tipa offers in the journal. Okay. Hmm. When the door to language is closed, new communication windows open. Let's think about that message and why it might apply here. You wondered why that's happening. Huh. So my purpose in doing it in consulting is sometimes people come in um, in a state of need. And what we want to do is get the primitive brain back into a, a state of being able to take in data and be in a more comfortable place before we try to move very far forward. And we can certainly do responsive cycles to get there. Sometimes if it's not up at the upper limit of tolerance, what we might be able to do is actually rather than use uh, a re this whole responsive cycling where we have to go around three times to get where we're going. Wow, that's a really great question. Why is that happening? Well, let's pause for a second and, and I'm gonna take a look and see if there's something in the journal that might help us. So I can already figure. <laughs> <laughs> and ask the authority figure what they're thinking and then bring it back to the table to see how that might apply. So it gives us a break from the intense relationship we're in. And I have added a third party with skill to see where that goes. And I had one more, which is use it to provide the person you are guiding with options to consider related to the interaction or experience they're having. So this is the phrase that I found. So I'm curious when we're thinking about what are the two options that we could possibly come up with, we all communicate with more than our words. What are you expressing today? What do you think you might, what does that mean for you? What do you think you might be expressing today? This or this? What are you thinking? So Dave, that's sort of where I came for consulting. Any, any thoughts on that guys? There's, there's no, there's a, such a hard way to figure out how to tell somebody, take a look at the messages you're sending, because it's such a condemnation about, and, a, and a, I'm, I'm presuming what it is they're feeling. And yet, if I just use that, it's just a statement that literally was clearly written with, without this information currently in the moment. Nope. Yeah. This oh. is an authority out here. This is a separate entity out here. And we went out and it said that and it's like, oh, hmm. Okay, wow. maybe that'll help us out of this box that we're in. Okay, now we can talk about care plan. You're in charge of care plans. Review a phrase and apply that concept when developing or implementing the per Many times when we are surprised or frustrating by something, it's not the person, but the disease they're living with. How might this this phrase impact the formulation of a care plan for this moment, for this person at this time in this situation. Many times when we're surprised or frustrated by something, it's not the person, but the disease. Okay. Use it as a resource or a go-to when you're trying to determine possible supports in challenging situations based on changing abilities of multiple people. You know what? Let's take a minute and consider the guiding phrase before we come up with a plan and get to fixing our agenda. Okay, here it is. Here's the phrase that I found this time. 
I choose to create moments of joy with you. I choose to create moments of joy with you. What does that guide us to do? Why? How can we use it in the plan? And what's one element we're going to make sure we incorporate? So, okay, what you got, guys? It, it really helps us focus on the person mm -hmm. and realize that what we're seeing is not caused by them, but the situation that they're living with. Yeah. So that's the journal. And this PowerPoint that, that I've put together, um, it's going to be available as part of when you purchase the journal, when you purchase the In the Moment cards, this webinar, but also this PowerPoint is part of that as a resource. So depending on your role and your interest and what you do out there in the world, this becomes something that you have, not just this journal, but this PowerPoint and this webinar to help you do what you wanna do with this. So other thoughts or ideas, ladies, before I move us forward or anything from the group that we have here? You guys might chime in with some chat. I don't know. You know, I'm not I'm not keeping track of the chat. I'm trying to keep track of a bunch of other stuff. So I might have missed something. I'm hoping that like I think about how many people come to us in a state of distress when they're doing the best they can and they get a ding, let's say from the state, some review board, the province. And I think about how you articulate the idea that, especially if you get a ding in something as abstract as person-centered care how and demonstrating in a written form how you will help your staff okay. use and approach person-centered care having these phrases maybe as the guiding principle for all care planning I could actually write that down in my plan of corrections and it shows that I'm relying on experts whose whole objective is to really think about that individual and then that becomes the guiding piece of my care plans. I usually write that as part of my plan. I'm really trying to think outside the block, box and how I help my folks move from the state of putting out fires to focusing on the individual so we can all get done things more efficiently, more effectively, but together. Yeah, cool. All right. Sounds like we got some ideas at least that might be helpful for journaling. I mean, certainly just journaling, that's fine. If people want to use it just for journaling, but to use it as a resource, there's lots of opportunities to use it as a resource, I think. Uh, and that's what I tried to help people appreciate. This is a tool. It's like a tool like any other tool. And we put the quotes in there because they're ones that we've picked up over time because they're things that I've said over time, apparently often multiple times over time, not just once, apparently. Just saying. Yeah. Brenda was sharing in the chat that this could also be helpful for her to be able to communicate with her person. And when others are asking, well, how do I know how to help her? So it would give her kind of some solid tools to kind of be able to say, well, here are some ways to be able to help her. Yeah, yeah cool. I mean, that's a great idea to use it as a guide. One person using it as a guide for a team that's really wondering, what the heck, how do we do this? Um, and it becomes something that people could think about sharing, just a phrase. Okay, how could we use this phrase to help us? Because sometimes we get stuck. <laughs> we do get stuck. So now in the moments of parts, we're going to switch out. Same idea, same grouping. So I've gone through the same thing, but now I'm talking about these cards, these individual cards. And what is the unique cards is they are separate and you can pull one out. What's also unique is we put them in three categories, an acknowledgement of where someone is, encouragement for where someone is, and then growth from where someone is. Um, the other thing is kind of cool is, I mean, they actually are kind of just pretty cards. I mean, on the back, that's the back. They're sort of pretty. You know, and then on the front, there's just a single message. So, and Beth has the growth ones. And, you know, so that's, you know, the point of it is to really, yeah, and there you go. And we have the encouragement ones. Um, it could be a gift, a whole set gift, or you could carry it along and just give somebody with a single card. You know, a resource 
something that you carry with you, you know, and, and just offer somebody in that moment. So the personal use options. So I'm, I have different times now. Before they were, you know, the pre, the, the post, that sort of thing. Now I've, I've created something a little different here. And so what I have is painful times, uncomfortable times, and ready to learn more times. Um, so at painful times, sometimes doing nothing is the best thing for the moment. <laughs> so to give yourself permission to pause, and it's okay not getting where you want to be, just pausing and be okay with that. Because, you know, sometimes doing nothing is the best thing for the moment. It's either best for me or best for somebody else. But, you know, sometimes just simply not doing anything for a moment. Now, remember, it's a moment. Then uncomfortable because it's painful. And I just need, I need a break. I need to pause. Um, uncomfortable times. Nobody gets to rehearse this stuff. <sighs> if this was the rehearsal, you could choose it to be. Then, you know, what if this was, you know, nobody gets to rehearse this stuff. But what if this was a rehearsal? What if this really was just a rehearsal? It's not the final episode. It's not the only time the play's going on. What if you chose to believe that instead of, I have to get it right. I have to be perfect. I have to make this work. Instead, you go, this is a rehearsal. You know, that's it. Because you don't get to rehearse before it's the rehearsal. It's, it's a rehearsal. So what happened? What made it uncomfortable? Why would it be uncomfortable for you or the other person? And what are two things that went okay? And what's the one you want to do differently? And let's practice. Because you can't rehearse this before you have to try it out. Because the thing about touch is you got to try things out. The thing about life, you have to try things out. And then when you are ready to learn, what's the first thing you can think of right now that makes you smile? What was it? Okay, so what's the first thing that made you smile? <laughs> what was it? Amelia said food. Food. Okay. So food. What it made you smile about that, about that thing, food? Why, Emilio? Did, why did you smile about that? Because I just had a couple chocolate chip cookies. Oh, so it was a specific kind of food that you just yeah. had, huh? Darlene said a sunny day. A sunny day. Uh-huh. So why might that make you particularly smile? What about that made you smile, Darlene or Amelia? Why would you smile about that, do you think? Really? Were you supposed to have the cookies? Not that I'm not supposed to. It's just a comfort thing. It's just a comfort. Had you eaten your lunch first? I had breakfast, but not lunch yet. Uh-huh. So you had dessert before lunch. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. What do you know about brain changes that might help you, you know, put that together for this interaction that you might be having with your wife or yourself in the in the kitchen when you're fixing your lunch? Huh. What do you know about this? Because you had your comfort food already. So what does that say about what you want to eat right now? Oh, I, I, that usually isn't a problem. I can eat regardless. Are you more interested in having a sandwich now that you've had two cookies? You're more interested in two more cookies. How about a sandwich and then two cookies? Ah, so because your brain is able to delay the gratification for two more cookies, you could have a sandwich in between. What might happen if somebody is living with dementia and you go to the kitchen after two cookies? They're going to go for two more cookies. You got it. So that becomes but the, yeah. Someone, Darlene said that the sunny day changed how she's feeling. Uh -huh. And Brenda said playing calming music before starting the webinar. Ah, so good. So what we're starting to recognize is what's the first thing you can think of? Sometimes even remembering what it was that made you smile might be something to think about offering yourself when you're ready to learn or try something more challenging or more difficult, like coming to the webinar. All of a sudden, it's like I'm more ready to learn. 
Cool. Nice. So you might want to think about how you could apply that in other, just saying. All right, group leader. Ask folks if they prefer to be acknowledged, to receive some encouragement, or if they're ready. And depending on what they say, I offer a card that matches the category for each person. And then have each person silently read their card and think for a minute. If you have an acknowledge card, read it out for us and offer your feelings or thought. One minute each. And then if for the encouragement card, folks. And then finally for the grow card, folks. Not car. Grow card, folks. Um, or I could have people pair up and have them think for a minute and then share with one another and then offer for each other again. Same idea that we did back with the journal, but now we're going to do it with cards. And the person gets to hold the other person's card while they talk about it so they can sort of use it as a visual and a physical thing to help them record the other person's. Or maybe ask them to think back over their week and something that's happened and, and then made them select that category. Why did they select the category of acknowledgement or encouragement or time to grow? And how the phrase that they got fits with all of that, if it does or if it doesn't. So that's some group ideas. Trainer ideas, painful times. The phrase that you, you've got is, you are someone special. So sometimes when you're caring and it, you're in pain, it's really important to give yourself permission to pause and be okay with who you are and not who you wish you were. I'm going to have you go through an AELC with the objective being accept present tense as a reasonable space to be in and to work from. You know, I sure wish, or I, you know, I should have. Mm -mm. Tell me where you are right now. Not what you should have, but get rid of the shoulda, woulda, coulda. Get rid of I wish. And where you are right now is absolutely a fine place to be. It's not a comfortable place to be, but it is where you are. So it's a reasonable place to be. So what are you, what's going on right in this space? Talk to me about this space. And let's move forward from that space. So we share, we figure out why, we figure out the how it's connected, and then we figure out what's the one thing we want to try. Based on you are special, and it's painful. You are special. <laughs> Not many people would be willing to go through this pain. So you are special. Uncomfortable times. Second guessing is part of making a choice. That's the phrase you get. Second guessing is part of making a choice. You chose one thing and now you want to explore what might have happened if you pick something else. What happened? What pieces worked? What didn't? Why would it? Why would another choice change the pictures or pieces or rearrange? How might you think through alternatives with somebody prior to trying it again with the person? And what's one change to make? And let's let's actually try the first way in a role play before we move to the next choice, so we can think about it again, experience it again before we move on to another choice. Let's just rehearse again. Oh, that rehearsal thing. I think we did that earlier. And then ready to learn more times. Feel the rhythm of your breath. Feel the rhythm of your heart. Everything has rhythm. Rhythm of your breath. Rhythm of your heart. Everything has rhythm. So what rhythms are you thinking about right now? And why might noticing? So... I'm going to pause here because I said I would run it for 45 and I, I've done my very best to keep it tight, but I'm, you know, it's fast sort of getting to a place of we're running out of time here, but I've completed the same process for coach. You know, again, what's different about the cards is people choose to be acknowledged. They choose to be encouraged or they choose they're ready for growth. And we use a resource you know, if they want to practice, what's the first step in moving forward is shifting your weight before taking a step. And we're working on skill. Or we could use the phrase for a role play. Ask people to notice the person. Oops, sorry. Ask the person to notice, you know, the person and what people they're trying to support. And thank you for choosing to keep going. Thank you for choosing to keep going. Okay, so we're going to we're going to role play. One person is really struggling. The person living with dementia is really struggling with something. I don't, I can't, I don't know that I, I don't know how to do this. 
Okay, so we're in a role play and you're going to say you're not sure how to do it. Now you're going to use the phrase. You don't know how to do it. Well, thank you for choosing to keep going, even though you're not sure how to do it. Thank you. Okay, and then for counseling, you know, fix your own brain and then use these same things. Again, pick a card, whichever one you pick, you know, which one is, which one they want, which category. And then after the initial contact that you get, you get in connection, then ask the person what their card says. And the card says your efforts made a difference today. Have them consider how that card might relate to why they came in today and have them come up with two options that, that mean what it means in their situation, how they might use the message in their card in the relationship and have them select one to pursue in the session. Let's pick one to work on in the session. Okay. And then there was also, you know, one more thing I came up with there, which is use it to provide the person you're guiding with options to consider in the interaction. Feeling guilty is real. <laughs> feeling guilty is a real feeling. Um, why they might be feeling guilt in some way. How might that sense of guilt be impacting emotions, actions, abilities, and things? And what are two possible ways to change the sense of guilt? What way are we going to start working on? Because if we, if we don't want to feel it, well, let's figure out what we can do about it. And then care planning, review a phrase uh, and apply that concept. So everyone has five basic needs, intake, energy use, output, comfort, and purpose. Have all your needs been met today? Because before I ask you to meet somebody else's, have all your needs been met today? Are you running empty anywhere? And now we can think about the person that we're trying to provide a care plan for. Use it as a resource or a go-to option. Let's take a minute and consider a guiding phrase before we come up with a plan. And we're gonna decide which one are we more interested in, acknowledging the person, encouraging the person, or the person is, we think the person is ready for some growth. Okay, we, this journey can seem long. Give yourself permission to take rest breaks along the way. So we thought they were ready for growth. Hmm, maybe not. Okay, so those are the things I came up with. Uh, I'm hoping that they might be things you find helpful. I'm hoping that they're a resource along with the product that you, you got. And I'm hoping they make a difference. Um, one way live. So, team, anything you want to add into the mix or attendees, anything you want to add into the mix? You know, as a very head first person, when I saw the encouragement cards, I thought they were cute. I thought they were pretty and I thought they were nice little gifts. And it didn't occur to me until really using them that I got to the place where I recognized the value that they have. And I ended up using them in one thing that wasn't listed closer to the last section, which was the consultation, which was almost um, a diagnostic screener. When I read randomly picked one encouragement or acknowledgement, one encouragement and one growth card to my daughter, my teenage daughter, when she was struggling during the pandemic. And she told me very clearly very unequivocally that neither the encouragement or the growth did she even want to hear. And I recognized that these cards were incredibly powerful to facilitate communication when language is lost for a variety of reasons. When I ended up getting her help. So I'm here as a very practical head first person that I'm passionate about what I do, but I miss my own daughter's suicidal ideation. And without these cards, I'm not sure I would have caught it. And while that's pretty strong statement, I'm surprised how much I've been able to use this as my sister lost her family member, a husband, as other friends have lost loved ones. And to find out where they are in that moment when I'm not quite able to greet them and figure it out with skill. So thank you for these. I hope that others find the way in which they might be able to play with these in safe places. So then they can actually go and feel a little bit risky situations and try them in a really powerful, meaningful way. And on that note, I think we'll cause ourselves to say thank you, Beth, for the wisdom of making that choice and feeling comfortable in at least trying it. And I hope Beth's idea inspires folks because I think 
all too often the biggest mistake we make is not making the offer. All right, everybody. Thanks and have an amazing day. And hopefully this is something that could help you use a product that we have out there. But the reason we have products is to help you. <laughs> That's really what it's all about. All right, everybody. Take care.